Good evening and welcome to Vandalia Butler High School. Tonight, WSN brings you a Division IV regional semifinal matchup in girls basketball. The number one rated in the state, Tri-Village Patriots, and they will play the number five team in the poll, the Marion Local Flyers. My name is Mark Scheim. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Jerry Snodgrass. Jerry, this Tri-Village Patriot team, 26-0, first time in school history, undefeated through the regular season, 11-0 in conference play, and they are a very talented team. Yes, you know, the superlatives you could, you know, that describe them, the list is a mile long. From player, you know, what will probably be player of the year in the state of Ohio, uh, going to Marshall, you know, uh, Riley Sagister, uh, just tremendous, tremendous players, tremendous scoring ability, and overall, this is a great regional tournament. And it's a team that uh, Tri Village that averages 67.6 points per game. They give up only 28.2. That's a huge differential, and they really get up and down the floor. And you know, actually, they have the largest point differential, 36.3, a little bit more than that now. You know, in the entire state of Ohio. Uh, point differential. So number, and they're also number one in Division Four on point per game average. Let's take a look at their starting lineup. As Jerry mentioned, the Player of the Year in the West Ohio Athletic Conference and it's Riley Sagister. She's a 5'7 senior, average 21 points a game and four assists. Number 11 will be Sydney DeLong, a 5'6 freshman at 3.7. Number 14, Morgan Hunt. She's a 5'10 senior, 14.4, 6.7 boards. She was a first-team all-conference player, as was number 21, Tori Richards, 5'7 senior, 13 points and four boards per game for her. And the final starter is number 24, Bella Black. She is a 5'10 junior. She uh, wears number 24. She's 6.3 points per game and 7.5 rebounds. Let's take a look at the Marion Local Flyers. Best Stripes team, they're number five in the poll, 22 and four. They were tied for the championship of the MAC with Parkway. This is a team that hangs its hat on defense as well. You know, and certainly, you know, they've got some big shoes, or big things that they're gonna have to do tonight to slow down, uh, you know, Tri Village. I mean, it's just a big monumental task tonight, but they also are playing very, very well. Uh, great, great matchup. They Mary Local Flyers scored at 43.1. They give up 33.4. They have a first team all-conference player. That would be number 10, Ava Unrass, 5'6", sophomore, 10 points a game. Number 12, Stella Hillsman, 5'9", senior, 5.7. They will go with number 24, Chloe Ronenbaum, 5'6", freshman at 7.3. Number 30, Lindsey Koenig, 5'10", senior at 9.7. And number 52 is Hannah Rose, a 5'6", senior at 4.1. Jerry, each coach gave us some keys to the game. Well, how do they look at this particular matchup? Well, first of all, let's look, let's look at uh, Tri-Village. You know, number one, they've got to limit the live ball turnovers. And I think that's a big thing for them. They play fast, they play hard. They also, going right with that, number two, they've got to score in transition. That's where their game is. They shoot the ball well and rely on that. And three, which is a key for everybody right now, you need to rebound the basketball. How about the other way, looking at Marion Local? Yeah, if you're looking at Marion Local, number one for them is, once again, control the boards. They must control the boards, rebound the basketball. Two, just the opposite. They need to slow the transition of Tri-Village. And three, they need to take care of the ball and be efficient on the offensive end. We've got keys to the game. We've got starting lineups. In a moment, we'll have the opening tip-off. You're watching Regional High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Vandalia Butler High School. Going through the final starting lineup introductions. Bray local Flyers in their white uniforms with blue and gold trim this evening. Tri-Village Patriots, they will be in dark uniforms when they have a, a blue numeral, Jerry, that's very difficult yeah. to see from so, our broadcast. So should we say at the start, please forgive us once in a while yeah. if we get a number wrong. That, that's so difficult to see. And then those type of jerseys become illegal in the future. They can't just be an outline of a, of a color. Can uh, I man, say it's about time? Uh, well, in all sports, I would agree with yeah. that. So we've had some difficulty with that this year. Tri-Village undefeated, 26-0, 11-0 in the Western Ohio Athletic Conference. Mary Local, 22-4, 8-1, tied with Parkway in the Midwest Athletic Conference. And we are ready for regional semifinal basketball. And we hit it out of bounds. Our officials tonight, Lionel Auburn, Kevin Beckstead, and Jason Arthur this evening from Vandalia Butler. First possession will go to the Flyers. Well, and you look too, you know, at Tri Village coming into this, and you know they really have not been tested. You know, come tournament time, the last two games have been 50-point blowouts. So a running clock. Can Lindsey Koenig down inside? A little up and under shot for her will not go. The rebound comes to Morgan Hunt. 
And I think that's, Mark, I think that's really where Marion Local needs to attack. They're big, they're strong. I think, and you saw that on that very first, first possession, they want to go inside. Turnover, loose ball, scrambling after it was able to unwrap to have our first foul of the basketball game, 30 seconds into this one. Sagerson got trapped on the sideline. Foul will go to Tory Richards. You know what, Tri-Village is not that deep. And that's one of the things, you know, they haven't had to deal with it. But foul problems could become a big issue. Up top of the circle, this is Hillsman. And the ball tried to get down inside, it will go off the Tri-Village Patriot. Well, second possession in a row that they've gone to Koenig inside. They're really gonna try to establish that. Quick bounce pass down inside, Runabaum up and scores. Tori Runabaum has the first basket of the game. Sagister being pressured. They pick her up right at midcourt with a double team. This will be a three ball out of the corner. That three ball misses for Richards. Koenig rebounds. I'm interested to see, you know, every time I've watched Sagister on any kind of highlights or video, she's gotten a lot of her points maybe wide open. So they're really going to focus oh, on her. Good pass and a cut to the basket goes Ava Unrass as she receives Lindsay Koenig's pass for a basket. 4-0. Flyers early on. Notice how methodical and just, you know, really, really trying to take, just like they said in their uh, in their keys of trying to be very, very solid and efficient in the offensive end. Pass goes down inside. The ball is blocked, however, by Hillsman. This is Rodebaum. Pass inside will go to Hillsman. Missed a shot. Rebound to Unrath. She goes up inside. That misses. And the rebound comes down to Richards. In a hurry, the other way, trying to push pace. This is Black, and she pitches it down into the corner where they find Sidney DeLong, and now back to Sagister on top. Well, you know, they left Bella Black open on that, you know, when that ball got reversed. And she's really not, you know, statistically has not hit a lot of threes on the year, so you can see why, yeah, let her shoot. Our first sub of the basketball game is Kennedy Hager, 6'3 freshman, we're averaging eight and a half points per game. She wears number 45. They're trying to double Sagister every time she comes off a screen. Almost a steal. Pass inside and a finish inside. The left-handed finish. And that will go to Black. Sorry, that was Hunt. Yeah. 24, four, not, or 14, not 24. Just uh, got lost on that. I think yeah. left her wide open underneath. Ball got kicked. And we'll stay with the Flyers. Talk about their tournament runs as we have a chance today. Each team has played four games in the tournament heading into tonight. This is Koenig. On top of the circle is rolling bomb. Three bounces around. Rebound comes to Hager. Well, right, right now, Mary Local has gotten very, very good looks on the offensive end. Sagasser heads to the rim. Her push shot will not go. It's rebound. It will stay with the Lady Patriots. Well, Sagister just told me right there that she is capable she of making is. that good offensive move and not just wide open getting her points. That she did. This is Black. Bella Black trying to get into the lane and cannot. She finds Hunt. Take a look at Chloe Ronabaum out there just not leaving Sagister at all. Little runner in the lane will not fall. Hager battling for the rebound, tipped around, and will be hit out of bounds by, I think uh, Hannah Rhodes hit it out of bounds. Anyway, we'll stay with the Lady Patriots. You know, Kennedy Hager, it's a 6'3 freshman, and she's, she's a dominant force in there for a freshman. Second team all-conference this year. Yeah, how about this? I believe that every, all five players, all five starters for uh, Tri Village have been at the all conference, all district. That's a pretty good team. Chloe Ronabaum got called for holding Sagister on the out of bounds play. That will be the first flyer foul. Katie tips the ball loose and it goes in the backcourt to get it. There's a steal. Unrath pitches it ahead, headed to the rim, will be Ronabaum, and good job getting back defensively. I think it went off her yes, leg. Yes, he yep. did. Morgan Hunt stripped it off of her leg. 
That's a great job by Morgan Hunt getting back. Looked like she had a clear lane to the layup. Well, full court pressure this is Morgan Hunt with the basketball. She is a first team all conference player. Nice when you got a 5'10 girl who can handle the basketball like sure that. Sure is. Trap coming off a screen. Here's a pass to the baseline. It's just a little bit too tall for Bella Black. We'll go the other way. You know, I really like what Mary Local is doing, you know, defensively and trying to slow that, you know, machine down and uh, putting pressure on everything. So far, it's been a flyer pace, certainly. Not a lot of transition opportunities. Rose on the wing. Koenig steps back. Lindsey Koenig for three. Dead center, Lindsey Koenig. That's just her third made three-point field goal of the season. Pretty good time to have it. Well, you just... Yep. Time out. We're going to go to the Lady Patriots. Halfway through quarter number one. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. The Tourney 10 of 10 is back. All week you can catch 10 games airing at 10 p.m. on WTLW and WOSN Tuesday through Saturday. Part of our 24 term broadcast this week alone. Tune in, lose the remote, and enjoy. Early timeout by Coach Gray from Tri-Village. You know, their athleticism right now at Tri-Village, yeah, Mary Local has done a good job of, you know, pressuring full court, pressuring all over the court, just taking that athleticism away. Here's Hunt in transition. Hillsman got back to guard her. This is Black. In the lane, left-handed push shot. That was a nice move. Hunt's got all four points. Well, the way they're taking away Sagister, you know, other players, you know it all the time. They have to come through, and she did a good job. Morgan Hunt did a nice job that time. Pass inside, Ronabon. Works, works, gets her shot blocked. Koenig gets it back. She's going to take a 17-footer and flash with another one. Wow. She's got five. Lindsay Koenig. Boy, Hager just set a serious screen. Sagerster trying to get to the rim. Lots of flyers in the way. This is Richards on top. Well, you go back to Lindsay Koenig hitting that shot. What a beautiful-looking shot she has. Hager saves that basketball. Her teammate overshot it. Bella Black missed in the lane. I don't think she expected to be that wide open when she got around her. Rose in the corner. Koenig trying to post up inside. This is Ronabom. And then Rose again. Koenig left alone at 17. Made one a moment ago right yeah, there. right from the same spot. Just pass inside. The unrass pass reception was stolen away by Richards. Tori Richards headed to the rim. In transition, we're going to get a shooting foul. You can just really see Tri-Village trying, trying, and trying to get out on that break and get things moving faster. And a Richards picked up the foul. I had a Rose picked up the foul. Troy Richards will shoot the free throw. That one bounced away. And the faster they get out, the, uh, the less they're able to set up. Mary Local is able to set up defensively, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Couple flyers in. Nora Eckstein, Jenna Kanapke. This makes the second free throw, makes the lead 9-5. Here comes some full-court pressure. 3-2 press after the free throw. Almost a steal at midcourt by Richards. Here's a bounce pass, Koenig, and Lindsay recipient of a good pass. She's got seven in the opening quarter. And that's what penetration does. Penetration opens that up. Make them pay for pressing you. Sagister. This time she's being harassed by Jenna Kanapke. Little weave action out front. Morgan Hunt will find Kennedy Hager. Pass inside. That was a wonderful play. Yes, what a, what a great read by Riley Sagister to go back door on that denied on the front side. And to catch and score at an awkward angle. That's her first basket of the game. Minute 43 to go. Hager steals a wing pass. Just pass down in the corner. This is Richards. She's going to give it up to Black. Morgan Hunt. They've done a good job of taking away that three-point threat. 
Black throws it down inside. Koenig tips it away. The ball ends up in Eckstein's hands. Ava Unrast, sophomore point guard, who was a first-team MAC player this year as a sophomore. She runs the show so well, very good for a sophomore. Koenig's shot will not fall that time. The rebound on the backside of Bella Black. Here's the ball thrown ahead. Hunt's trying to get to the rim. That was a nice move by her. Boy, you can tell when they get out and transition. You sure can. The athleticism. Basket will count. Foul goes to Nora Eckstein. That's the beauty, I think, of Tri-Village. You know, you take away Sagister. Morgan Hunt has six already. Allison Dirksen will enter the basketball game for the first time. Morgan Hunt with six points. A 55% free throw shooter on the season, but nails point number seven for her and cuts the lead to one. Ronenbaum moves to point guard. Zone action, 2-3. Yeah, zone, and yep. after a free throw, you wonder if they'll do that all game, switching on, on free throws. Next time, down the corner to Rose. Skip pass will end up in the hands of Ronenbaum. Kennings out of the game, getting her first break. Here's a foul line jump shot by Dirksen. Turned just a little too quick, I think, you know. Good shot, good, good opportunity, but she just turned and didn't get her feet square to the basket. Lady Patriots with a chance to end the quarter ahead. Sagister working, now she gets a three look. Wow. Well, <laughs> you know, Jerry, that is her 100th made free field goal from the three-point line of the season. And also, worth saying, that's her 387th on her yes. career, which is a state record. It is a state record. Tri-Village with that three-point field goal will end up the first quarter ahead by two. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewers supported TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTOW.com and click the donate button. Jerry, a little stat number. We're talking about what uh, Riley Sagister's on the season. Her 100th made three-point field goal. Mary Loco has made 52 on the season coming into the night. Isn't that an amazing? amazing. That, that puts it in perspective. She's got a strange release on it, too. You know, yeah. it, 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 it doesn't look like your, your smoothest shot, but hey, every time it, I've it, watched her, it goes in. <laughs> it goes in. That's what matters, I guess, doesn't it? Headed to Marshall University. Yes, yeah, she is. We're going to give you some of her numbers as we go for this. She is a, a Miss Basketball nominee for this year in the state of Ohio. We'll try to give you some of the reasons why as this contest progresses. Hunt throws it down to the corner. And now back to Sagister, getting harassed by Corona, Chloe Ronebaum. Now doubled up. Whenever she gets near the rim, they're trying to do that, aren't they? And she lost the basketball out of bounds under pressure. I thought she was going to get through that I double team and get uh, a layup. As athletic as she has been in the first quarter, I thought the same thing. Here's Ava Unrass back to the back basketball game to play point guard. And here's the 2-3 zone look again. Last several possessions, that's that's paid off for Tri-Village. Hillsman gets a foul line jumper, and it bounces around. Who hit it out of bounds? It was knocked out of bounds by Floyd Ronebaum. That will allow Lindsey Koenig to re-enter. The winner of this game will get the winner of our second game this evening. That would be the number two ranked in the team in the state, Fort Lauderdale Redskins, and they will play the number 11 ranked team, the Rushi Raiders. How about that for a regional? How about Four that? ranked teams. One, two, five, and 11. That's pretty good. That's the way it's supposed to be. Here's Richards. I'm not a big pole guy, but sometimes they tell you some things. Yep. Sagister, deep three this time. My goodness. Wow. Her second three-point field goal gives her eight points on the game. The lead goes to five. But, Coach, there's no way she's going to she, shoot she, from she, there. She just rise, rises up and drilled it. Flyer's been stuck on 11 for a while. Hillsman flashes in the lane and tried to get him down inside the Koenig, held ball, and the arrow will stay here at Mary Local's end. Yeah, the zone has proved effective for Tri-Village. 
Back into the game will come number 24, Bella Black. Coach Brad Gray is giving a, each girl a little bit of a break, leaving his sixth player in the game, Kennedy Hager. Koenig inside. That was shot a little bit hard. Rebound comes to Black, who just going to enter the game. And Sagister in transition. There's that screen at the top again, trying to free her up. Got Ronabom trying to deny Sagister the basketball, so Hunt's going to work the lane. Her left-handed shot is a little bit hard. Katie had it for a moment, and Unrast ended up with it. Here's Ronabom headed to the rim through traffic, and she will draw a foul. Troy Ronabom will be the first flyer to get the shooter free throw, and the foul goes to Bella Black. You know, it's not really Mary Loco's the Flyers game, but, you know, trying to get down a little quicker to keep that zone from setting up, you know, you know, could be very effective for them. Troy Ronabom shoots 75% of the free throw line. That's her first, let's see, her third point of the game. I think they just set some type of pressure up because Hannah Rose come in and remind their teammates where everybody belongs. Another free throw, four for her. Nope, they're going to back nope. off and play half that court. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, they're changing into a half court trap. Little 1 3 1 look. Put Stella Hillsman on top of it. The bad part about this is Sagister is so effective from the corners. I've seen her shot from the corner. She's, uh, that's what usually is open against a 1 3 1. Good pass inside and almost a basket for Kennedy Hager, but her left handed shot was hard and Kennedy rebounds. Unrast on top, setting things up. Staying in the 2-3 zone, the Lady Patriots. Hillsman with a look on the wing, turned it down. Koenig flashes in the middle. Here's a pass down inside her, shot's blocked. That's where your 6-3 big person comes in. Yes, it is. And you know, again, they're getting those very good looks. They just have to keep going at it. And sooner or later, those are going to fall for the Flyers. Kenny standing on the three-point line. She wants another look. That one at the front of the rim and bounces to Unrast, who goes up in traffic and can't finish. That's, Rebound to Hunt. That's where that size came in effective there, too, for Tri-Village. Hunt picks it up under pressure from Hillsman. Three minutes gone here in this quarter. And working inside with almost an and one opportunity was Bella Black. That was number 12. Stella Hillsman, Stella Hillsman becomes the fourth flyer to pick up a single foul in the basketball game. Bella Black is a 62% free throw shooter on the season. And used every part of the rim to go in. Bella Black, very versatile. You know, I told you, she's not a, a, a great three-point shooter, doesn't take that many attempts at it, but she plays inside, outside. Once again, using every part of the rim to make both of her free throws, pushes the lead to five. Unrass coming off a screen. Just pass inside, Koenig, kick out. This is going to be a shot by Hillsman that goes. Two-pointer? Yep, I thought it was. I wasn't sure whether she got behind the line or not. Is that next time? Yep. Uh, my bad. I thought that was 12. Instead, it was 14. Leads back to three. Yeah, they're really trying to run her off those screens. Hunt got into the lane. Shots hard, but she out hustles. No, Kenny got to the basketball. And her coach gets a timeout. How about Lindsay Katie? Wow. I thought she was not going to get there. Instead, she got there in time. And we're going to get a Marion local timeout to save the possession. 4-10 to go in the second. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. WSN and TV44 are part of Axe Incorporated, a nonprofit organization. Your donation in any amount is a contributing factor to our broadcast schedule. We thank you for your donations. You can donate online at WTLW.com. East team has called a timeout. Lindsey Kennick's hustle got her team a possession right there. You know, sometimes you wonder, though, too, you know, is the timeout worth that possession? You know, you hear that a lot. 
you know, I think typically with the number of timeouts you have in a game, yeah, it is. It kind of depends on the situation, it does. does it? You know, yep. I, I would agree with that. Here's a shot inside that will roll around and not go. And rebound to Hager. Sackerson's going to push the pace. She's got eight in the game, comes off a move to the goal, and she keeps going. She turned the corner and will pick up a Hillsman foul. Stella becomes the second or the first player in the game to have two fouls. You can see why it's so important just to keep the ball out of her hands, mm -hmm. out of Sagister's hands. She's, she makes so much happen even when it's not shooting and scoring. Those two fouls brings Hannah Rose into the basketball game for Stella Hillsman. Sagister comes all the way around off another screen. Here's a foul line jumper. Rebound comes into Rose who just entered and she will draw a foul. That goes to... I think it was Bella Black. If it was, that's her second. Yep. She came out of nowhere, though. Yeah, I she mean, did. she almost had a hand on that. This will bring Sydney DeLong back into game. Sydney's a 5'6 freshman who started the basketball game. You know, as I take a look at this, now they're in 2-3 zone, but as I look at that, I look at Kennedy Hager in there and what a force she is and what a difference maker she is. No points yet, but what a difference maker she is defensively. There's a pass out in transition right to the rim and finishing inside is... Morgan Hunt, she's got nine in the game now. Good transition basket for them. And that's one of the keys for Mary Local is they wanted to stop that transition. Here's Ronabaum. And rebound Sagister, and when she gets it, she's headed full steam the other way. That's a nice pass. But the shot won't go for a teammate, and Unrass rebounds the basketball. Rose. The skip pass finds Nora, Nora Eckstein. Pass inside, Koenig, turnaround jumper. What, what a nice looking yes. shot. Let's see, Koenig's got nine in the game now to lead Marion Local. She got nine to their 17. She caught that, pivoted so well, squared up to the basket. There's a pass that will go inside to Hager. She's gonna kick it out. This, Penetration dribble and high off the glass, but not going. Getting her own rebound, though, is Richards. Sagister from deep. She was almost out of bounds. Yes. 11 for Riley Sagister. Three of them from the three-point line. I see why she has 101. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Back in the game will be Jenna Kanapke. Timeout, Mary Local. They're trailed by six, 207 in the, in the second. You're watching high school basketball on WSF. We're back at Vandalia Butler High School. The third three point field goal of the opening half by Riley Sagister has given her team a six point lead. Talked a little bit about some of her numbers. She was a player of the year in her conference two consecutive years. Southwest District player of the year in 2022. And again, this year, she's been a first team Ohio player once, second team once, third team once. She has 1,851 career points. And as you said, nobody's made more three point field goals in Ohio high school girls basketball than she has. You know, I watch her and I just can imagine her dad's the uh, boys coach. Yep. Also superintendent at Tri Village. But I, I wonder, you know, I just wonder. What she does in the offseason, she shoots, she and shoots, she, and she shoots. And, and I would guess, as I've seen her pass today, works on her ball handling skills. Yes. I, I, she is very talented young lady, listed at 5'7", headed to Marshall University. The possession arrow on the, the tie-up will go the way of the Patriots. Yeah, I can assure you that that shooting is not, she wasn't born with it. She has worked, you know, you talk about shooters have to work, 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 you know, it just doesn't, just doesn't happen. That's obvious for her. She's worked at it. Now she's going to the rim with that left-handed shot, pressured inside, and big scramble for the rebound. Unrass goes to the floor to get it. Good hustle by her, and then Nora Eckstein was strong enough to keep the basketball in her possession. Flyer needs some points against the zone. And again with Kennedy Hager in there, that's a big zone. Lindsey Kennedy from the free throw line. She becomes a double-figure scorer with 11. The kind bounce that time. 
Thank all, you, sir. Keeps all working. The, yeah. And then Fine is going to get a foul. And all the credit to Marion Local for, you know, she's open. Koenig is open in there. They've hit her. They've got to her. They're going to their strength. They're going to what's open. Jenna Kanapke gets her first foul. A pretty cleanly played opening half. Five fouls for Marion Local. Three for the Lady Patriots. Sagerster lobs it out front. Koenig tips it. Got to scramble for the basketball. Who's going to get to it? And Hager gets to the ball. And she's going to bring it up court until she finds Morgan Hunt. Hunt working against Eckstein. Scoop shot rolls yeah. it in. Those two ladies now to go to class, don't they? Yes, they certainly do. She's got 11, as does Sagister. And that ball is going to be kicked. Those two have 22 of their team's 25 points. They all have that little underhanded flip, you they know, do. that kind yep. of a, uh, and again, it's not something they just did tonight. They worked at it. 30 seconds to go in the opening half. Rodebaum's going to get a three look short. Sagister rebounds, and they're running again. They're going to throw it ahead to Richards. Troy Richards goes to the rim, had a chance for Dan one, but that one would not fall for her. She will get to go to the free throw line. Who was the foul assessed to? Ava Unrast, that's just her first. The team's sixth of the half. And you can tell they're just chomping at the bit to get out and run. Toy Richards is a 73% free throw shooter on the season. She had just one for three tonight. Nora Ekstrein goes against the rebound. Last shot opportunity, Marion Local. Kaney, here's a rose in the corner. Ball's tipped to Unrast. Her shot will not go. Kaney gets another look at it. Oh, it's a little bit hard to buzzer for her. Three shots, none of them would go. Tri Village, 25, Marion Local, 19 at the half. You're watching high school turn of basketball on WSN. Back at Vandalia Butler High School, the Tri Village Patriots quarter scores of 13 and 12 for their 25 points. Riley Sagister and Morgan Hunt have 11 points apiece. Sagister did it by making three three point field goals. The Mary Local Flyers, they have quarter scores of 11 and 8 for their 19. They're led by Lindsay Koenig. She has 11, including their only three point field goal. Jerry, any first, uh, second half thoughts coming up? Well, you know, I, I, I'm thinking there, I'm trying to dissect this for Mary Local when you go in the locker room. What do, what do you tell them? Well, number one, you're getting shots on the inside. Keep doing it and just keep attacking that zone and play better defense to, you know, limit the drives. Well, they and come right out of <laughs> Hannah Rose, nails a three out of the corner. But, uh, you, you know, yeah, they're, they're getting those looks. And we said this right at halftime is they were only down six. It isn't like they were down. Well, uh, the team that averages 67.6, yes. they've got just 25. Now, on the other hand, uh, you know, the, they were only able to put up the, the 19 themselves, averaging 43. So it's been a good, there's a steal. We're heading to the rim. This will be Ronabom. The shot's blocked, but Hunt's going to get a foul. And that, I think that's a critical point, too. And I think that we're going in the locker room. I think you're trying to be as positive and upbeat if you're very local as you possibly can be. Because look what you've done. Shots will drop. If you uh, if you try Village, you know, you're going in there saying, let's get it out. Let's get out and go. Let's get it out and go. Troy Ronabom is now three for three at the foul line for her five points. And as well as uh, the Flyers played at time, Roddy Sagister is the real deal. Yes, she is. That shot's a little bit hard, and kind of a collision for the rebound, but the Lady Patriots keep it. This is Hunt. Flyers do a good job of getting three bodies back. Here's Sagister. And they trapped her in the wing as they tend to do, and her coach takes a timeout. We're going to keep it right here. With this particular break, we're just uh, 38 seconds into this. That was a save a possession timeout. Yeah. That was another one of those where they did that earlier, where Sagister came off that screen on the side and got deep in the corner, and Marion Local trapped that. So, you know, at least they're very, very conscious of where she's at. We said that earlier. Sagister taking a shot, and, you know, 
Coach, I'm not, I'm not going to defend her out there. Well, I think this half they probably will. Well, it's, it's not where you think of as right. a normal shooting range for the team I, uh, player I guard. And you're going to pull out from out there. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so out of, out of character from what we would typically think of defensively. Are you out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online. On Roku and Apple TV, down our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allow you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. 722 to go. Tri-Village has taken their second time out here. And this one in the third quarter, of course. They lead by a couple still. Actually 25-23. I think they wanted a foul on a push off by Sagister that time. Sagister has not committed a foul in the game. Deep three bounces around, and Anna Rose eventually is able to get a rebound knocked into her hands. I know it's pretty redundant when I say that, but she just gets her hands on the ball, and that doesn't matter where she's at, she's a threat. This is Unrath trying to work the baseline. She can't get away from her defender. Back to a man to man by yeah, Tri Village. Yeah. Probably said, you guys spend a lot of time talking zone offense. We'll come out man yeah. here in this quarter. Huh? More typical for us. Here's Hannah Rose from the baseline. Shot a little bit hard to rebound to Black. Sagister throws it ahead. Rim running and trying to get a shot up. Unable to was Richards. But Hunt rebounds in the corner. Here's Hunt. Morgan Hunt right to the rim. Her shot's a little bit hard. Rose rebounds again and stolen. Alert play, Tory Richards. Just a little careless on Another that. Another steal. Oh, almost. Runrath is able to get it back. The long couldn't secure it. Runner in the lane bounces around and bounces out for Ronebaum. This may be the tightest rims I've ever seen. Well, and the pace has really picked up here. DeLong throws it back out on top to Richards. Here's Sagister in the lane. Left-handed scoop. That one's going to go. 13 for her. Well, she's made a believer out of me. She that's really for sure. Yeah. She just is such a threat. Doesn't matter. It's not just shooting threes. They do a good job of freeing her up, too. This is becoming a pretty big, important uh, possession, I think, for the Flyers because the whole pace of the game has changed. Unrass couldn't get the rebound. Hunt did. Here they go again the other way. Flyers get back, though. Here's Sagister to the rim. Shots blocked by Koenig and went and blocked it off of Sagister. It was six points at halftime. It is six points right now, but the pace has certainly yes. been more uh, up and down in this particular quarter. A little bit more pressure, too, by Tri-Village on the ball. Maybe that's why they went back man-to-man -man also. Roundabout. Caney. Back cut. Unrass finishes. Boy, I love teams that can back cut the basketball. Yep. Some, and you know, the, the teamwork, the, the chemistry of being able to see that and make that on spot pass. Leads down to four. Patriots. Here's a pass down inside. They got Morgan Hunt and triple team. Kick out. The long tries to get to the baseline. Hunt's going to get a three. And long rebound will come to Richards. She goes right to the rim, and she finishes. Active third quarter, Tori Richards. She's got five now. Unrath, spin dribble. 15-footer for her is short. You know, that's really been the big key. I mean, it's back you know, to that's six. Why it was tipped. That's why it was short. It's just, yeah. shots just haven't fallen. I, you know, Mary Logos had good shots. But when I say that, you can also see they're hurried a little bit taking them. And I think, you know, that's that pace that Tri-Village likes to play. Unrafts into the lane, pushes it up, and it will roll around and fall in. She's got six points now. And then she gets a foul. No, Ronabon Roman, Roman gets the foul. Her second. This is a wonderful high school facility, Jerry. It sure is. You know, you look back. You said it earlier that, of course, it's really filling up now, too. Yeah. But, you know, with the second team or second game crowd, but it's deceiving a little bit, too. It's so big. 
Rogers. Pass thrown out on top, and Rotobaum will have a chance to secure the air ball. She goes and gets it. It goes right to the rim, and will draw a foul. Foul will go to Tori Richards, her second. Flyers won the 50-50 ball that time. Give Rotobaum a lot of credit for hustling after that. Rotobaum's got five in the game. She is three for four at the free throw line. You're all right about the tight wrist. Yeah, you, I, can, I, I, you can just tell by the bounce. Yeah. You're not just, it's a longer bounce. Yeah, that really plays a role in rebounding, too. She makes the second. And what do we got? They have a little officials conference here. Lionel Ogburn will go to the scorer's table and discuss something. Did we get a warning to Marion Local? It has that look to it. Okay, so the ball went through the basket and somebody touched it. Is that correct, Jerry? I think that's what well, I it think was. that's yes. the call. Yep. First warning is just exactly that. Right. It's a warning. Second one would become a team technical foul. And both coaches yeah. get to the explanation <laughs> so we know what know what's going on. Here's a 1-3-1 to look for Mary Local. Coach Brad Gray said, oh, more or less like, okay, whatever, yeah, let's go. Boy, let's just play. Talk about a good man and a good coach. You know, I've known him through the years and uh, really does a nice job and so appreciative of everything that, you know, not only we do, but... Sagaster to the wow. rim. She got bumped going to the rim and still had enough strength to score and go to the free throw line. Would you be surprised if she shoots 79% from the free throw line? <laughs> Not at all. I tell you, she's just impossible to stop. Stella, I, Stella Hillsman got the third foul, too. Stella's done as, as, well, as good a job as you can do. She's yes. going to step out and be replaced by Nora Eckstein. Sagister averages 21 a game, has 15 right now. And left-handed push shot means she has 16. And she has done it everywhere you can. Yep. She, she's made medium-sized jumpers. She's gone to the rim. She's drawn through, scored through contact, and she has three three-point field goals. And we're back at six again. That number keeps popping up. Eckstein, bounce pass inside. Koenig wants to turn and shoot. Can't. Rotterbaum's right there to secure the rebound and score. Any way you can get him. Eight for her. She's a second-team all-conference player. We're going the other way. Unrasped. Here's Eckstein who just checked in. Hannah Rose for three. She started the half with a three. The rebound on the backside to Bella Ab uh, Black. They run that little flex cut as they reverse the ball. They're trying to get it inside to Lindsey Koenig. Kennedy looks to his pass. The teammate bails her out, and they actually lose the basketball to Eckstein. Richard tried to steal a moment ago, came sneaking up to get that one. Flyers down by four. Lady Patriots 34, Flyers 30. I haven't talked too much about Ava Unrest, but boy, she does a nice job handling the pressure coming up the court. That's a really nice sophomore guard coming back. He has the ball now, wants to go to the rim, spin move into the lane, off balance shot, tipped out. Rose had it, but Sagaster gets it away from her. That was a good move, and again, the ball just didn't drop. Three ball. Rebound. X time. So, you know, while I watched the Patriot crowd, they, they were all set to explode. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just expect her to make that yeah, shot. Yeah, you do. And they, they were all set, and then the shot was just a little bit long, and she tipped the ball out of bounds. She just has such a quick you know, release on she it. Does. You're not going to – you just can't stop it. DeLong is back in the basketball game for the Lady Patriots, as is Jenna Kanapke for Best Tribes team. But a chance right now for the Flyers to cut it to two. There's unrest off a screen. Kick out. Right off the bench. Three ball. Long. And this is a long run out. Here goes Richards to the rim. And spun out on her. And it's tipped out of bounds by Hunt. That's a good job wow. of hustling back, though, and putting pressure on that. It wasn't just like a solo run out. There was some pressure there. But again, Tri-Village not been able to get much in transition no. today. 
Here's his own. Again, you're talking about a team that's averaging the you know number one scoring team in the state. They've got 34 almost through three quarters. Rose looks inside. Koenig goes up and she will draw a foul. We see Katie who had 11 in the first half has not scored in quarter three. Kennedy Hager gets her first foul. Good patience that time by the Flyers of working the ball a little bit, waiting till Lindsey Koenig is open. Lindsey Koenig free throw is short. She's a 71% free throw shooter. That Murray local crew, they kind of got basketball down, don't they, right they now? The sure boys do. play tomorrow night. We'll see them at uh, Wapak when they play St. Henry. Makes the second free throw. Well, there's an inbound infraction by at least the Marion local people thought there were. Sagaster did not do so, according to the official. It's down to three. Close as been in a while. Here's pass inside. Hager tips it out to DeLong out of the corner. Unrath from DeLong. Rebound. She got a teammate open. It was tipped by DeLong out of bounds. Tried to get the ball ahead to Kanapke and couldn't. 42.9 to go here in quarter three. And another good chance to cut it, you know, cut it down to one or tie it. Zone out of bounds by yeah. Tri Village. Here's a pass inside. Rose challenges and draws a foul on Kennedy Hager. Picked up a couple here rather quickly. Designed out of bounds play that time, you know, and able to, you know, catch. I, I think it was, was it Lindsay? Uh, I couldn't tell who was, who kind of got out of position on that a little bit. Or, Ken, excuse me, Kennedy Hager. Yeah got out of position when the ball came to the top and went right back down underneath. Anna Rose's three-point field goal started the scoring here in this quarter. The free throw's a bit hard. 58% free throw shooter on the season. That one also is hard, but Rose hustles into the rebound. Long rebound, Jerry. Yes. And it's stolen. Just... And what do we got? It looks like Tori Richards secured the rebound and then somebody in a white shirt grabbed her. Yeah. The foul will go to Hannah Rose, yep. her second. Just an out of bounds. Nobody heard on it. And they're not in the bonus. Only three, uh, three fouls in this half so far. Here's Morgan Hunt. This is Richards. She was headed to the baseline. She gets called for an offensive foul. Tori Richards becomes the first Lady Patriot with three fouls. And that will allow Bella Black. You know, when you look at it, you're almost through three quarters. Mary Local is doing everything they need to do on the defensive end. Yeah. And in fairness, they're doing everything in the offensive end. Shots and free throws just are not falling. I think the other part of that is uh, the, the Patriots, you know, they've not been able to get their transition game going, but they're still up three. You know, they, they found yeah, other correct. ways to be successful so far. Down to eight. Eckstein looking for somebody, throws it out on top to Rose. Pressure, long shot by Rose, bounces around and Mary Local cut the six-point lead at halftime to three. Tri Village, though, still ahead 34-31 as we head to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Do you enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44. So we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTOW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. It was a 12-9 quarter for the very local Flyers. And the lead that was six and a half is now three with Lady Patriot basketball. Well, and it's dangerous right away when you've got Sagister coming down with the ball. And her three bounces around. The rebound will come to Nora Eckstein. Good job of Nor by Nora Eckstein of getting that off the weak side board. Sagister has 16 in the game, 12 for Lindsey Koenig. Each team's leading score. Morgan Hunt had 11 at halftime. She still has 11. Koenig down low. Left-handed move in the lane is blocked. But Rodebaum gets yeah. the rebound. Bella... 
Black is on the floor, and we're going to get a held ball that should favor, should stay with Mary. Yeah, very local. Yep. Looking for a game reset. Tri Village has three timeouts remaining. Mary Local has four. Five team fouls in the second half for Tri Village, three for Mary Local. And now the arrow will favor the Lady Patriots. Eckstein looks inside. She's able to find Hillsman. DeLong rebounded, tried to save it. Who hit it out of bounds? It was hit out of bounds by one of the Marion local flyers. This half especially, there's play is really physical. And I, you know, I will say be the first to say that officials are calling this game the same way they did in December. But <laughs> a lot of times at this level, you'll see, you know, unless there's a change of possession or causing a change of possession, you're not seeing that whistle blow as much. Black. Now Sagister, left-handed drive, cut off by three different white shirts that time. Here's DeLong in the corner. And Morgan Hunt. And somebody's cutting to the goal, and somebody grabbed the hold of yeah. Let's see what the call is. You know, Mark, that's a discussion for another day, you know, when you yeah. hear that comment of, yeah. well, you don't call it at this level. Well, yeah. okay. Like, so now you are putting decision-making and yeah, right. all that into the hands of the officials outside of the normal call. Chloe Rodenbaum now has three fouls in the basketball game. Her team has four team fouls in the half. Here's a move to goal, but good help defense. Here's Richards. Good ball movement by Tri Village. Black. They're showing they can be patient. They, they too. really have. They've taken care of the basketball. Here's a bounce pass into the lane. Richards tries to get to the rim. Lindsey Kenny got a hand on it, but then Richards pushed it out of bounds. I think that possession emphasized too. There's a lot of physical play on this one. <laughs> yeah. Back into the basketball games comes Kennedy Hager. They're going to stay man. They're going to go zone. Looks like they jump back and forth. They're going to pick up man. Yep, aren't they? They're picking up man. Yep. Nobody scored here in the first two minutes of quarter number four. Comes unrasped off a couple of screens and to the rim was Hillsman. Her shot was altered inside. Kennedy Hager rebounds. And I think that's what the man to man is doing for Tri Village. You know, they might be giving up a drive, but, you know, they're in the traffic and they're just forcing a quicker shot. Right handed scoop shot this time by Riley Sagister. She's got 18. It pushes the lead back to five. Unrast looking inside the Canick help came from the backside though Hillsman gets a three look Stella Hillsman Her first basket of the game and Jerry my stat page says she now has four of those on the season And you know that couldn't have come at a better time. And, uh, there's a pass inside Kick out Richards from the corner. She matches yep. it. Yep Tori Richards scores from the corner. Her 39 three point field goal of the season. Timeout, 4.59 to go. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Basket at one end, three point field goal. Back to the other end we go. Tori Richards makes a three. We're still at five with five minutes to go. Well, 4.59 anyway. You know, she, Tori Richards, I think you may have said it earlier, first team in the conference, first team Southwest District. Yep. She is a good free throw shooter at almost 80%. So, you know, she's capable, and she just showed it there. Here's the zone. Every time Marion Local tries to get into it, the Patriots have had an answer. Oh, it's kicked. Rose will have to do the inbounding again. Zone's really far out on the floor right now. Rodebaum shot bounces around and goes in. Not many kind bounces on that rim tonight, no. but she becomes a double figure scorer with 10. It's almost like shots are starting to drop. <laughs> and the lead is three. Sagister, Rodebaum guarding her. To the rim she goes. 
That time her scoop shot will not go. Who hit it out of bounds? Kennedy Hager hit it out of bounds. You know you expect her to shoot that up so yeah. you know your hands are up on it and she scoops she underneath. Scoops, yeah. That's hard to defend. It, it almost defies like, I right. mean, that's what you and I would do in the driveway. <laughs> well, many, well, many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> Three-point lead, Tri-Village. Here's a pass inside to Koenig. She tried to pass across court and couldn't. Patriots hustling to the loose ball, and they're going to get a foul. Troy Ronum got, got a little bit too aggressive and picked up foul number four. Kind of a wild scramble right there, an unfortunate foul, but yeah, a foul I mean, it is. That's exactly right, unfortunate foul, because, you know, the ball was loose all over the place, and wrong place, wrong time. Now, is that, I, I've got a post in my way. Is that five team fouls yes. on them? Yes, yep. five each way. Okay. 4.02 to go. Sagerstrom. This time she's being harassed by Kanapke. It's a good free throw shooting team. And there's going to be a foul number six. Ty Village shoots 69% from the season on free throw line, but they've got several girls who can really yes. shoot it. So they keep the ball in their hands. They're very dangerous at the foul line. And that is foul six. And number two on Jenna Kanapke. And that's a big story going down the stretch here. This is Morgan Hunt. Ball's tipped away from her by Hillsman. She gets it back again. And then finds Tori Richards. Sagister Riley comes off a screen and gets an offensive foul. That will be an illegal screen set by. I want to make sure we get the correct number for a give it to you. It was number 21, Toy Richards. Toy Richards now has four fouls. And Sydney DeLong will take her place. So they have played six throughout the course of the game. Flyers have played eight off and on. She's going out of the game, said, what did I do? What did I do? But it just kind of caught her a little bit too much and forced her out of the way off that screen. Kanapke throws it in the corner to Hillsman. Here's a deep three by Unrast. And the rebound, Koenig and Lindsay's in the right spot to score. It's yeah. a one-point game. Cuts it down to one. We're approaching three minutes to go in the basketball game. Here's Sagister. She wanted to get a three up. Instead, she works the lane. Kick out. DeLong in the corner. Here's Hunt working the lane. She throws it down inside to Hager. Her shot misses. She and Katie go up for the ball. What do we got? A held ball. The arrow favors the Lady Patriots. That was a good job by Kennedy Hager on the pass that went into her. I mean, <laughs> I was like a tight end catching that thing, but she had good hands to be able to snag that. Hunt, ball's tipped out of bounds. Who hit it? Hillsman hit it out of bounds. Yeah. Back in comes Tori Richards with those fouls, and DeLong will take a seat. Also back in, Chloe Rodebaum. She has four fouls in the basketball game. Each, uh, each team has six, by the way. Yep, and you're down to that last two, three minutes now, and you're going to play your players, and yep. there's no sense holding them out at all. This is Richards, who just came in. Tori throws it into the corner. Black. There's a long pass, and they found the open man on the back side, and that was Kennedy Hager for her first basket. Good pass. I mentioned that, early, that earlier, that Kennedy Hager, you know, has not scored, you know, but she's been such a dominant force on the inside, inside defensively. Patriot fans up one. Some defense, and Rodebaum knocked the ball off of her knee. Pass was a little bit short and tough to handle. And you know what? That's what pressure does. You know, yep. pressure, you know, I see all these teams today. I mean, we did too, but... You know, you look at their stat sheets, and they really talk about deflections. And that's just pressure on the ball, trying to get a hand on it. There wasn't that time, but it forced a, uh, that errant pass. Sagister wanted to get a three, and Rose got out. She couldn't, but instead, Richards goes right to the rim. Her shot's blocked. And Hillsman gets it and then shoves off. Wow, <laughs> she got away with one. Just protecting the ball. Ronabom thought about a three in the seam of the zone. Here's Unrast. Composure is such a big Unrast thing Unrast right to the rim, scoop shot, she missed it. And the rebound to Sagister. 
Had a look. Riley Sagister, the next foul, puts him at the free throw line. A deep three. That's huge. I was just getting ready to say that Brad Gray is going to tell him, remember, we're going to shoot the rest of these at the free throw line. Instead, she pushes yep. the lead to six in her timeout. Mary Local, 125 to go. You're watching high school tournament basketball on WOSA. We're back at Van Dyke Butler High School. Big three-point field goal. Riley Sagister puts her team up by six. The winner of this match will be back here on a Saturday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They will play the winner of our second game tonight from the Shelby County Athletic League, Fort Laramie and Rushi. Mark, you said a, a very good thing during that timeout, you know, from the coaching standpoint. You know, I mentioned, like, yeah, we're going to shoot the free throw line, and all of a sudden you see Riley Sagister take that three and hit it. You let shooters shoot. Yep. That's that's one of the reasons why she is such a good shooter. You don't overcoach her. Ball's tipped out of bounds by Morgan Hunt, trying to run a screen to the corner. I told, his own. I told players during, during my coaching career, I apologize to them sometimes because I think I overcoached them. You know, and I think that's a tendency sometimes to do. You put a lot of confidence in players like that when you let them do that. There's a three left. They're going to get a shot. Bounces around, no, but Koenig rebounds, and she got fouled going to the rim and had, almost had an and one. Instead, Lindsey Koenig will get to go to the free throw line. Well, Hager you know, picked up third foul. Go ahead, and it does, it does really come down to free throws now and good composure in this last minute. Lindsey Koenig has 14 points in the game. And that one bounced out on her. One oh six to go. That one also. But the rebound, Hillsman gets it. That shot won't go. Hager with a big rebound and she is fouled. And we're in the bonus now, so. Oh no. Yes we are. Yes we are. That foul went to Stella Hillsman. She now has four in the game. Kennedy Hager is an 83% free throw shooter on the season. 6-3 freshman. She plays starter minutes. Okay, so she, she doesn't start, but yep. she plays starter minutes. Yep, she does. Three points for her. The lead is seven with the 60 seconds to go. You see the good teams, you know, and sometimes we've talked about it before, but how important a sixth person or seventh person is off your bench. They're just great, great additions to a team. Okay, that one also shows you why she shoots 83%. Her team leads by eight. Flyers need points to hurry. Unrass with a deep three. Hillsman rebounds, throws it to Rose. That shot's oh, she was standing out of bounds yeah. when she rebounded it. 49 seconds to go. Lady Patriots in a good spot. Sagister have to foul her, and she just weaves through traffic. And there she will be fouled by Lindsey Koenig. And that's what's going to happen, you know, every time uh, she takes the ball out, but it's with the intent of getting it right back. And when the mm -hmm. ball's in her hands, you have no choice right now. That's why it's, it's very tough. You're going to send her to the free throw line. 79% free throw shooter on the season. She's one for one tonight. Make it two for two. That is point .22 for her. And the left-hander pushes another one up. That one's long. Rebound, Rose. It's a nine-point game. This zone has been very effective. Yes, it has, and it's extended so far out, making it so tough. Hillsman, short jumper, is long. Rebound went to, I think it was Bella Black, and then she pitched it over to, to uh, Tor uh, Morgan Hunt. Morgan Hunt will get to go to the free throw line. Coach Brad Gray and the Tri-Village has done a good job of mixing up their defenses and, you know, at the right times. And I think, the, like you said, that zone has been so effective. Morgan Hunt had 11 points in the opening half. She has not scored here in the, the second half. And 
time. Nope, she still, yep, she rolled that one in. Goodness. Just gonna stop guessing on these rims, Jerry. You know, that's about the first bounce, uh, that's shooter's yeah. bounce that we've seen. 10 point game. 11. Punch with 13 points in the game. Timeout. We're gonna keep it here, 26.7 to go. There is no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer supported TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTOW.com and click the donate button. Well, Jerry, tomorrow night you and I will be in Wapak. Yep. And we will see the Mary local Flyers and a fellow Max School St. Henry. Yep, ought to be a uh, it should be a great game and uh, love love seeing. That. I love that at Wapakoneta. You know, I I think we had that game last year. We had Mary local yeah. and and can't remember who it was maybe a year ago. Maybe, maybe yeah, it was. It was at you, but it, again at Wapakoneta and uh, great sight. And if there is a team that has improved this year with only one senior in the St. Henry, yes. and they were very good in their district semifinal matchup when they defeated New Bremen. So looking forward to that matchup. Yeah, we were looking at the four teams in that district, and we know, man, it's just like so, you know, so balanced. Rose for three from the corner. Hunt tracks down the rebound. And we're going to get one more foul. This one will go to Lindsey Koenig. Well, Lindsey Koenig is going to a graduate and this will be her final high school basketball game with Jerry 5'10 senior first team all conference player she has 14 today to lead her team and gonna go on and play college volleyball so looking forward to seeing her do that yes and you know this final score really is not uh, going to be indicative at all of how close this game was free throw bounces around and goes in we're going to get a lot of subs in the basketball game right now. Hannah Rose, Hillsman yep. going out. Lindsey Koenig going out. Getting yep. a well-deserved, well-deserved hand. He brought in a number 35. That's Brooke Wilkers in the basketball game. So is 32. Uh, Ali Everman uh, into the basketball game as well. Number 21, Audrey Win Winter. I think we got all the new bodies in. Here's a three that's going to go up. And Kennedy Hager rebounds, and this one is going to come to an end. 50 for the Tri-Village Patriots, 38 for the Marion Local Flyers. And, Jerry, you are exactly right. This game was uh, significantly closer than that. It was just a three-point game at the quarter break, but the final quarter went 16-7 in front of favor of Tri-Village. You're going to look to it. You know, a lot of those shots that just didn't drop, especially early on, just did not drop for the Flyers. Marion Local have quarter scores today of 11, 8, 12, and 7. They were led in scoring by Lindsey Koenig with 14. Chloe Ronnebaum had a 10 for them this evening. They will finish the season with a very fine 22 and 5 season. They were uh, co champions of the MAC. Tri Village, on the other hand, well, they're going to remain undefeated, Jerry, the number one ranked team in the state. They are 27 and 0 now. Quarter scores for them 13, 12, 9, and 16. They got 22 from Rodney Sagister. They got 14 from Morgan Hunt. They got eight from Tory Richards. And if anything, Jerry, I think they could play that they could prove, yes, we could play a basketball game where we can't go out and score 70 points and run up and down the floor. And I think that was a big question for Coach Brad Gray coming into this game. How are we going to play in a close game? You know, how are we going to play when we're slowed down a little bit? I think got that answer tonight. We want to thank the athletic director here. That would be Jordan Shoemaker. Our crew in the building tonight is Benjamin Reif and Lexi Waddle back at the station. Nick Fraley and Megan Sherrick. We want to thank you for watching. We've got another game coming up right after this one. That would be Fort Laramie and Rushi. But right in this game, Tri-Village 50, Marion Local 38. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.